Follow me on a journey creating this artwork in Blender from start to finish, from the first inspirations and drawings inside of Blender with a grease pencil to blocking out the scene, playing with light and shadow, a cool technique to create bushes pretty fast, stones pretty fast and with a procedural way we are going to play with fire, with uh, volumetric smoke, with textures, the post-processing and I'm even gonna show you how to create chromatic aberrations in Photoshop. So make yourself comfortable, enjoy this tutorial, I promise you'll learn a lot and of course make sure to check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash rescan to get access to the project files for this tutorial. First things first, let's start by gathering references. I use Pinterest and Google Images to find some matching images. For this project I heavily got inspired by this bottom left image, but I want to add some of these cartoonish stones, a bit of haze and overall a moody look. It should look a bit kind of uh, dreamy, should be in a desert and overall give some meditative vibes. So in Blender let's add in our camera and change the aspect ratio to make it fit our image a bit better. These are always the same steps. I add in a camera, I add in a ground plane and sometimes add in something for reference, like a human for, for example. But in this case we'll use Blender's drawing tools, the grease pencil tools, to sketch out the rough composition. I have my, um, my reference images up on my second monitor and of course I'm looking at those um, as I'm doing that. I'm imagining good compositions, keeping the rule of thirds in mind, looking at light and shadow and take a look of if everything kind of plays out nicely. Uh, pro tip in this is go back in and back out and look uh, if it looks good on the small scale as well because most of the content these days, let's face it, is watched on uh, smartphones anyways. So in this second stage, um, which is called blocking, we go in and create some rough geometry that resembles our scene. In this case I'm creating these, uh, this triangle shape, extruding it using beveling to make it kind of a bit rounded. And then I'm simply copying this shape and uh, creating these gate, gate elements uh, from this, this triangle and the smaller triangle which sits in front, in front and uh, projects the light onto our main character. Um, be clever about what you're doing. Don't waste your time creating unnecessary detailed uh, geometry. Like for this stone get, for example, I uh, add in a circle for reference and use simple cubes. Um, press Shift D all the time to um, yeah to duplicate them around the circle and to create this gate. The same with my uh, stone in the background. At this stage, I'd like to add in some basic lighting as well because this really helps me to visualize where this image is going. Um, I even add in an emission material to our main gate uh, in this case, add in a sun lamp, add in simple point lights. Again, keep it very simple. Yeah. So um, in this case I'm adding in a sun lamp, um, making it a bit more diffuse so the shadows aren't so harsh. And yeah, uh, I like to keep this side view open so I always uh, take a look at the camera. Here I used a simple plane as my as a replacement for my main character. And um, yeah, I'm taking a look at this image, changing the perspective a bit, and then I go back in, use the drawing tools, the grease pencil to further refine the image and draw in some details. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, a few of the individual elements. In this case, we'll take a look at the floor. For the floor you need a plugin, the ANT landscape plugin. Press Shift A, add in a landscape and use the dunes preset to create some dunes and scale them along the z-axis because I found them to be a bit high for my case. I duplicate a second instance of these um, to make a larger scene. And after I added in a sun lamp, uh, you can really see the texture and the height differences in in this floor and this ground. And yeah, the material for for these uh, for this floor is very easy, very simple as well. It's it's just simply this texture, which is plugged into into a principal shader, 
I've got some other textures uh, like the normal texture, roughness and so on. And I, I'm using a simple bump map to plug that into this principal shader. Nothing fancy, no texture painting. Um, it's a very minimalistic way, but uh, I think it works pretty well in this case. So let's have a look at these stairs. Um, pretty easy as well. Uh, as you might have guessed, start with a cube and then transform this cube to kind of make it look uh, like uh, one of these elements, bevel the edges by pressing Control B, Control R and proportional editing to, yeah, get the, to get the right look. And now you could use um, an array modifier and a curves adjustment, but I uh, like to do these things manually and distribute them in a kind of a curved pattern, always looking at the right side and um, always looking if this um, yeah, looks good in camera because that's the most important thing. Now let's look at some of these plants and these bushes because there is a very cool and easy technique to create them. It is heavily inspired by game design. I simply use such a texture, which I downloaded from textures.com, uh, of a bush and um, it has transparency enabled. So um, this is a bush or, or a leaf which is cut out. Uh, I use it, place the origin right in the center um, and then make a duplicate of that and rotate that on the z-axis. Then make these individual pieces a bit more random. So um, it doesn't look so uniform and um, with this technique, you, you will get away from such a render. It will cast accurate shadows and will look good. And you can quickly create uh, something which would you otherwise take, uh, take you a long time. And now um, with these bushes selected, let's place them into the scene and voila, it's as easy as that. For this main building, um, it is very easy. Just these basic planes and this concrete texture, which I again got from textures.com. Simply downloaded it all, all the texture pack, plug that right into a principal shader and I think I didn't do anything to that. It uh, just be, should just be a subtle texture. Now let's look at our stone gate. For these stones I like to create them in kind of a comic -y style so um, they should look uh, not too real. I'm just using a cube and transforming some of the vertices and adding in a subdivision surface modifier followed by a decimate modifier which I'm going to reduce heavily uh, and now you can play a bit around with the values to get some randomness into these stones. This modifier stack is followed by a bevel texture or a bevel modifier which really makes these stones look like stones and with another displacement texture or displacement modifier with a Voronoi texture. You can add even more randomness into your, into your mesh. Place it uh, right um, after your subdivision surface modifier. Play around with the values until you get something that, that looks kind of like um, uh, the stone, this effect uh, I like to achieve. And um, now very important is now to get some variation into these because we, this is the base model and we want to use a lot of these. So to achieve variation, simply add in an empty and use the empty as the texture coordinates for your displacement textures and plug, a, plug your empty in. And if you move your, your mesh now, you can see uh, that it uh, will change with its position because the position of the texture is dependent on the position of the UV or the relation between the uh, empty to your uh, mesh. And now I'm again uh, adding in a, a circle as reference for our stone gate. Don't do this by eye. Simply uh, use a circle as reference and now just duplicate a lot of, a lot of these uh, objects around in the circle and then go in and add a bit of randomness because this really sells the effect. Um, nothing sh in nature looks uniform and um, same and, and it's the same all the time. There's always an element of randomness and this is what I'm doing by scaling all of these meshes into different directions. Pretty easy, pretty simple, don't need to do a lot of complex sculpting. As for the materials, I want to create a very special look you all know. First, let me give each of these stones a bit of randomness with an object info node and a color ramp. Um, you can use the random property to give 
each of the stones a different color, which again adds in randomness. And not just in a black and white, but you can give very subtle grayish tones to each of the stones, uh, so they look a bit more natural. Use the same texture for your roughness input to make some of them a bit more glossy and some uh, a bit more rough. With a Musgrave texture, which has a bit more roughness and a bit more randomness again, uh, I'm going to add in a bump map. Use this as your height input, plug it into your principal shader. And if we take a closer look at that and of course plug it into the right slot, and uh, now you can get the feeling of a yeah, subtle stone texture. It's a very small detail. Again, it shouldn't be too hyper real, but um, yeah, these are the details I like to add in. Now um, we want to make some directional directional dot which comes from the top. For that, I'm using the normal input, separating all of these um, yeah uh, vector channels, and using just the Z channel will give me a gradient from the bottom to the top of the object. You can of course rotate that with a mapping node, but uh, I take it as it is, plug it into the mix RGB give it a darker color and now you can see um, if I'm doing it the right way, give it a bit more greenish color. This is something like moss, which is on the weather side, for example, of this gate. It should be some something reasonable, but this technique is um, pretty practical for these cases. This kind of low poly uh, look and these textures often are um, characterized that the edges are a bit worn out. They tend to be a bit more light than uh, the surrounding textures. But uh, because we are now in Eevee and we're not working in cycles, this achieving this process is a bit more difficult. So let me show you a cool technique to um, get around this limitation. So let's have a look at how it should work in cycles. Um, so for that, add in a geometry node and scroll down to the point in this factor. And this should be white at the edges, but it isn't at EV. So let's uh, create a duplicate of our stones. Just select the stones and press Control A and apply the visual, visual transform to apply all of these modifiers. So it just meshes, join everything into one mesh and give this mesh a vertex color map. Um, go into texture painting in the shader. Don't forget to add in this uh, color map. Um, and yeah, now you can add in some uh, random uh, colored spots, but that's not the, the main point here. We'll use a special feature in Blender. It is called Dirty Vertex Colors, and you can see me using it here. And it does uh, what it sounds like. It makes dirty vertex colors. And um, yeah, this is kind of the same effect as using the point in this value in cycles. Um, it has to be crushed a bit by uh, a color ramp, but um, yeah, uh, to get this randomness for each uh, individual stone back, I'm using, uh, I'm separating them again and uh, mixing in these new vertex colors with the main diffuse shader. And as I said earlier, using the color ramp to to further focus um, focus these uh, effects on the edges. Um, if you would have reduced the beveling a bit, it would be a bit more pointier as well. But this is everything for our main stone textures. All the other stones in the scene are simply duplicates of our main mesh. As for our main character, um, I cheated a bit. I just used a stock photo, cut this guy out and uh, imported it it as a plane and placed him right in the, the scene. Um, pretty easy. Now looking at the torch, I'm going to show you everything here as well from the modeling stage to uh, how I tricked a bit to get this uh, fire without any form of smoke simulation. Um, so first it's simple, uh, yeah, plane modeling. Um, I'm making one of these individual outer component components, this holding structure. And um, by using our cursor as our rotating point, we can simply rotate these around. Now I'm going to make the handle of the torch and um, giving it a, some, some uh, yeah, some a pointy end right there, adding in a few more details as we go. And now 
I am using auto smoothing, rotating the whole thing. And now I'm going to make the metal beams that attach uh, to the wall. I simply used a plane for that, uh, turned them into these triangle shapes, converted into a curve. And uh, yeah, that's pretty easy. Now for the fire, um, I simply add in a sphere and use this random proportional editing mode, which you can turn on by pressing the letter O uh, and using transformation as well as scaling as well as the rotation to yeah, uh, yeah, create my fire uh, look. And as you see, due to the uh, random fall off of proportional editing, this creates this kind of uh, very uh, low poly fire style. I give it a new material and create a new emission material like this one, give it a kind of an orangey reddish color. And of course, enable bloom inside of cycles and increase the strength of this emission. And voila, we've got ourselves a torch. Now place them both on both sides into the scene, give them a bit more randomness in height and rotation. Enable bloom again, screen space reflections, very important, indirect lighting. And speaking of lighting, uh, let me show you which uh, are the lights I added into the scene. Um, first I added in a sun lamp, which is very soft again, very important, which shines in from the front, added some hazy bluish lights from behind the gate to get this kind of creepy, hazy atmosphere. I added in um, a few point lights uh, in a orange tone right behind our uh, torches to illuminate the scene here, added in a few lights inside of the room to brighten it up because I felt it was a bit too dark. And of course, added in the sun, the diffuse sun lamp, very large radius on this point light, played around with the color temperatures uh, of them all, made them all a bit reddish. And um, yeah, for the world, it's very special as well. You can see it's very hazy right here. So make sure to enable volumetrics. Without volumetrics, it would look uh, this way. This is, uh, by the way, the background image. But uh, the main focus is I added in a volumetric shader on the world. Um, material and this is a bit uh, kind of reddish has a low density so you can see the, the um, scene a bit more clearly with the anisotropy you can play around and focus the light scattering a bit more to the light sources and the cool trick here is to get this kind of cloudy look going added in um, a noise texture um, or you could use a Musgrave texture, choose what you want in combination with a color ramp to reduce the intensity and the, yeah, this math node to really make it uh, fit the scene uh, to get this cloudy look going. And by playing around with a color ramp and the size of our noise texture, you can make the clouds larger, a bit more defined, a bit less defined. Simply copy this node setup, it's pretty cool and adds a ton of variation to an otherwise very, very boring scene without you going in and making smoke simulations, for example. So make everything ready for rendering. And with that set, press F12 and jump right into the post-processing. Let's go through that step by step. We are here in Photoshop, of course, my favorite application of choice. I first reduced the lightness around the edges, created a small vignette. And here I'm uh, yeah, getting rid of a rendering artifact. I think I made a mistake in Blender and um, yeah, I don't know how this happened, but uh, it's good for you to see these mis how to fix these mistakes as well. I am using uh, content-aware filling for that. It's this great and amazing feature inside of Photoshop using some clone uh, stamping and the healing brush tool um, to further refine it and make it kind of look real. Um, can save you a lot of time, especially on one image, then going back into Blender and fixing it there. So I like to do that. Here I added a bit more contrast, made the image a bit brighter by using a, um, a levels ad adjustment. Um, inside of here, I overlaid the background image, which you saw earlier in Blender and increased its intensity a bit, used a mask and some clever blending techniques to blend them together. Again, I want to remind you that you can download all of these project files, of course, from Patreon. Even the Photoshop file is included this time, so make sure to check out 
patreon.com slash rescan. And uh, going on, I added a few glows by yeah, simply using a large soft brush, changing the overlay mode. Uh, I like to use screen or soft light for that on a low intensity, very helpful for that. To get a bit more color contrast, I added the com a complementary color, used this orange and teal look you see a lot of times on a very low opacity. This trick is cool to create these kind of light streaks because it's always about creating imperfections. I keep and keep saying that. Um, simply make a very harsh contrasty copy of your image and use the motion blur feature with a screen overlay mode and some clever painting masks to kind of make this lens look a bit more real as if it was shot with a real lens, which is pretty cool. Um, make sure to keep this trick um, in your toolbox, very helpful. Here I'm using a combination of Photoshop's um, color lookup tables, um, choose what fits the scene the most. Um, and yeah, in the second in the second stack, I'm adding in a shadow from our main character because I felt that this was lacking a bit because he isn't actually real for that. Simply paint in a dark spot, paint it out wherever your character is and make sure that it fade, uh, fades out the further you go from the light source because that is how shadows would work in real life. And Go, make sure to reduce the opacity of all of your effects again. Um, here I uh, increase the contrast on our main character, the real lead the eye into the scene, reduce the saturation as well because it got a bit too saturated for my taste. Now your focus is really on the center. Um, I gave this uh, triangle shape a bit more depth by simply adding in a small line around the edges. Could have done that in Blender, but um, this is a bit easier for my taste. If it's just a single image, it's okay. It's always about the right combination of tools. Added in a few different ones, combined them with different opacities and layer styles. Added a few glows right here for that. Again, adding contrast to your scene, blurring the scene out using a screen overlay mode on a very low opacity, maybe even going in and painting it in with a layer mask is a pretty cool trick for your toolbox. Again, I should make a, a full tutorial just dedicated to that. Will be coming, I promise you. Uh, but um, yeah, here I'm adding a few um, contrast adjustments, making the blacks really black because that is important. Um, I want to make this image too hazy. Uh, in this case, I'm adding a bit more micro contrast using a high pass filter on a medium setting with a soft light blending mode. And um, cool trick here is again, use a layer mask to only make this effect apply in the center of the scene. This will further lead the eye into the scene. Use some unsharp masking here to give the scene a bit more sharpness. Camera Raw is a cool tool to quickly dial in the, the overall look of your image. Um, I normally use this uh, at the start, right after a rendering, but here I'm using it in this stage on a very low opacity to give a bit more color contrast to the image. Um, so to get a bit more variation in colors. And now um, here's a cool uh, technique to get some chromatic aberrations because chromatic aberrations, again, it's a camera imperfection and that's what this stage is all about, um, are used a lot of times to enhance 3D renders and make them look a bit more real. And for this to work, um, I applied it in a few different intensity levels. Make a copy of your whole scene, uh, then go into the channels, choose the green channel, for example, you go into camera raw and in the distortion tab type something like minus one. So it is distorted by just a tiny amount. Do the same thing to the blue channel and voila. It is as easy as that, doesn't take you 20 seconds even, and uh, looks very cool. I did this in a few uh, intensities, typed minus two, minus three, minus four, and so on, and used some clever masking to apply this in different intensities. Don't know, I thought it uh, looked pretty cool in uh, this image. 
And for some final adjustments, I added a few cloud layers in the background, but not really visible. Don't uh, think that is important. Gave uh, it a few lens flares by simply drawing on with a brush. And I used this grainy texture, which I found on pixabay.com. I think it was pixabay. Overlaid it with a screen a blend mode, used um, yeah, a film stock as a final polishing step. And yeah, with that, I think we're done and I think it looks pretty damn good. Again, you can find the project files on patreon.com slash rescan. Make sure to check this out. Follow this channel if you like these types of tutorials and want to see more. And with that said, see you in the next one. Bye.